Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this little fella right here. It's called Mini World War II. It's put out by Formosa Force Games. And we saw it at Essen for the first time and I was intrigued by it because it's a diminutive war game. Uh, a little bit abstract because it's uh, basically just area control. It's card driven. That's something that I've enjoyed a lot in the past and I enjoyed it now currently as well. So uh, it really kind of struck my fancy. So I wanted to give it a whirl. Played it a few times and uh, now I think I'm ready to review it. So let's get down to the table. I'll show you uh, the basics of how everything works and then we'll talk about my final thoughts in just a few moments. Let's hit it. So here I have a four player game of mini World War II set up for you. Each player will take the role of the different countries that are involved. You have Germany, Britain, Japan, and the USSR. And there are two other uh, nations that are not quite yet in the game yet, and that is China and the US. Now, if they ever do join the war, Russia will be controlling the Chinese forces, and Britain will be controlling the US forces that are out here in green. The goal of the game is to score 32 points. So if your team at any points has a combined total of 32 points, then you have won the game if you've done so at the point during the round where you're supposed to score points. Now, if China or America ever enter the war, then they have to reach, uh, the, the allies have to reach 36 points, whereas the Axis still only have to reach 32. So that's something to keep in mind. Now the game is a card driven game where you're going to have a number of cards in your hand. Now the cards are a number of different things. First of all, this red card matches the Russian faction. This black card matches the German country. Uh, then you also have a uh, white for the Japanese and then you also have yellow for Britain. And then you also have other cards in here that we'll get to later on. But generally speaking, the anatomy of the card is up here at the top. You have a technology that you can play this card for. And we'll get to that in just a few moments. You also have a number of operation points that you can use during the course of your turn to carry out different actions like building units, moving units, attacking units, that type of stuff. And then you have an event that can you, you can play down here. Now, this is only playable if you, uh, if it matches the country that you are playing. So only the Russian player could play this card for this event down here at the bottom. Now this event simply means that it's going to be minus one operation point for that round for whoever you play this upon. So you're going to be playing this, if you're the Russian player of course, you're going to be playing this on Japan or Germany so that they have minus one operation points. But as you can see, Germany also has those, these kinds of cards and so do Japan and uh, Britain where you're going to be getting minus one operation points if they play that on you as well. Now, as it is a card-driven game, the goal of the game is to score points. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to score points by controlling these different areas that are out here on the field, or on the board, rather. Uh, these three star regions right here will score you three points. Two star regions will score you two points. Uh, regions that don't have any stars in them at all are going to score one point and so forth and so on. Now the game is played in a number of rounds that's that's uh, denoted up here. And there's a couple of things here. Down here you have a little card symbol with the number three in it, three, four, four, five, five, five. And uh, then up at the top, you also have a flag that's represented in some of the boxes. What this means is that's how many cards each uh, faction is going to be given at the beginning of that round with this country getting one extra. All right, so in the first round, Germany has four cards, everybody else has three, and they are going to be going first, as you can see with the background of this color matching uh, the German faction. Then in the next round, the UK is going to go first, and then in the third round, Japan is going to go first, and they're also going to get an extra card. Now, each round is played out in two stages. The first stage is the strategic stage, which is actually skipped in the first round, so we'll get to that in just a few moments. The second stage is the action stage, where uh, starting from the initial country, which is uh, Germany in this case, uh, each country in clockwise order will be able to play one strategy card from their hand and perform one of the actions that that card allows them to do. And then once everybody has either determined to pass or they are simply out of cards, that's when the round will end 
and you go on to this to the uh, next round, starting with the strategic phase and then the action stage again. Now, the things that you can do on your action stage are uh, quite simple. So first of all, let's say that uh, we have, uh, this is Germany's hand here. So they have uh, two Russian cards and then one Britain card, and then they have one Germany card. So they're gonna take a look at that one first. So they can play it for uh, their operation points. So they're gonna have six operation points, which we'll get to that in just a few moments. Since this is a German card, they will be able to play this for uh, the uh, event down at the bottom. This particular event means that you can build uh, an, uh, a land army and a navy, and then you can move both of those um, uh, units for free. You can also play it for the uh, technology that's up here at the top, and we'll get to that in just a few moments as well. So if you want to play it for the uh, operation points, there are three things that you can basically do with the operation points. You can build units which costs three operation points each for each unit that you build. So if Germany wanted to, they could spend all six of their operation points and put two of their tanks onto the boards where they can build units in any of these places that have this little silhouettes here. But if they didn't want to do that, they could also use it to attack. So for example, I could spend three operation units, uh, operation points to attack this place over here, removing it from the board. And then they could also move for uh, two more into Poland, which would gain them two more points on the board like so. Now, one thing you have to make sure is that you keep your logistics in line. And that means that uh, once you get outside of your home area here, you need to make sure that you have units in uh, reserve. So for example, if he wants to move over here into the Baltics, he would have a broken line of command here. And so he would need to move somebody else in here before he could do anything with this guy here. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, for later on. But that is an attack and then a move. He used five operation points out of the six. Then he can simply take that and tap it simply saying that I've used all but one of these and now I have one left over at the end. But you can use all of your operation points too. Another thing that you can do on your turn is play for the uh, technology that is up here at the top. Now, everybody has uh, their own technology tree that is here and it's the same for everybody. And what this simply means is that uh, you can play any of these as you want to, but before you can play any of these, you have to have already played these over here. And this is an ex explanation and, and symbology of what each of those do. I'll let you guys figure that out when you get to it. That'll take a lot of time uh, to go over it. But simply notice that you have to play these first before you can move on to start playing these and that one. Uh, but the tech tree is there. In order to play a technology, you simply have to take the card and tuck it underneath the board. And then in the strategic phase at the beginning of the next round, you'll be able to turn that over and that's a technology that your country has and can take advantage of at this point in time. Something that the UK and Russian players can do is called the Lend-Lease action. And that simply means they can take any card from their hand and simply discard it in order to move or escalate either China or America to entering the war. If they do that, they'll be able to advance the marker here and they'll be able to draw one of the Chinese cards or one of the American cards respectively, uh, depending on which one it is, for the next round of play. And then of course, that is a way for you to escalate to get China and America into the war, which does make it more difficult for you to win, but they are very powerful cards over there. And finally, the last thing that you can do is simply pass. You don't want to play any more cards. You're down to one card and you want to save it for the next round. Whatever it might be, you can simply pass your turn and it'll go on to the next player's turn until everybody has passed and then the round is over. Once the action stage is done, uh, you check for victory. If nobody has gone to victory, you advance the marker and you go to the next strategic phase. Now, in the strategic phase, you're going to draw, uh, you, the allies are going to draw one card for uh, each place that was advanced on the allies join the war tracks down there. Then you're going to draw the number of cards that's in, uh, indicated up here, keeping in mind that you are able to carry one card over from the previous round. And then if there is a uh, nation's flag in the upper corner of the, the round marker, then they're going to get an extra card for that specific round. Then you're going to activate any technology cards that were placed under the board during the uh, country's turn last round. And then every country will have the opportunity to discard a card 
and then redraw another card. So if you get a card that you just, you know, you can't use or you don't want to uh, uh, keep in your hand and, or whatever, you can discard one and draw up another. Now, this game can be played with two or three players. Uh, in a two-player game, one player would take on the role of the Axis, the other player would take on the role of the Allies. In a three-player game, uh, two people would take on the role of either the Axis or the Allies, and the other person would take on the role of both countries for the other side of that conflict. So it can be played from two to four players, um, but I think it probably is best at four. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Let's get to my final thoughts. So that's that for Mini World War II. It is really a simple game as far as how you can play it and how it works out and all this other kind of stuff. The, I guess you could say, complexity comes in the strategic choices that are at your disposal. Uh, do you uh, waste some of those good uh, ops cards for the technologies that are printed on them? Uh, do you throw away some of those cards so that you can advance your allies, uh, join the war track, and try to get your allies to join uh, more? More quickly than waiting on them to join on them on their own. Uh, do you do you push this side of the border? Do you kind of shore up your defenses and and push the other side? These are all the kinds of choices that you have to make in this game, and I think they are good choices. Um, uh, the point total is going to fluctuate by all of the different areas that are being struggled over uh, because you know you may take control of an area and gain those two points but then they come back and uh, with reinforcements and and take it back and so you lose those two points and they gain those two points back so there's a lot of that kind of tug of war that's going on here that was interesting so let's get to my pros and, and cons and and go from there now my first pro of the game is uh, the fact that I think they have captured, I guess you could say, the essence of the struggle, so to speak, um, in this very small, or I don't want to say small, but maybe diminutive, game about World War II. Uh, you know, usually when you have a war game, there's all of these chits and all of these rules and all of these charts and all of this kind of stuff, and that is just simply not here. Even the tech tree, which I was kind of concerned about because this is such a small game, I was concerned that they were kind of felt like they may be shoehorning in this tech tree, but it isn't. It's, it's pretty simple how it works. All of the symbology that's there is a little bit hard to grok, but you'll you'll get it with a, just a couple of plays, no worries. But I liked the the compact nature that this game had, and that's what that was one of the first things that really kind of uh, opened it up to me was the the fact that it looked neat. Um, the the board was not your normal conflict-ish type of board of, of like a map with all of these different countries on it. It was just uh, geometric shapes on the board, which at first doesn't seem like it would be interesting, but it reminded me of that, you know, those scenes in war movies where you have people uh, moving these different markers around and it, it represented the different troop movements that they were ordering and that type of thing. That's what it reminded me of. So it, 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 popped, it, it popped in my head. Um, so I like the compact nature of it. The second pro of the game is the component quality. The, com the cards are all really good stock. The uh, player aids are useful. There's a lot of symbols on here though, and, and I'm not real savvy on having a whole bunch of symbols, but they're not that difficult, but I can see how people may be a little bit daunted by this um, on the first couple of plays. But after that, it, it, it really kind of clears up for you and it's not difficult at all. Uh, the cardstock is good. Um, the wooden pieces are neat. Um, I liked them as well. Uh, I uh, The point markers I thought were, I mean, they're just, you know, blocks, uh, cubes, which could have been neither here nor there for me. But um, again, they're not bad quality, so they don't take away from the component quality. I just wish they could have been something better. But I like it. Um, now, the, the artwork is probably something we'll talk about later in my cons section because it's really kind of bland, but um, I think uh, the gameplay makes up for it a tad. And with that, gameplay is also easy uh, and uh, easy to understand, easy to uh, know what you're going to be able to do on your turn. Uh, the cards that you have are very clear. Op points, technology, and if it's one of your country's 
cards, then you also have the event there at the bottom for you uh, to take advantage of as well. So the card play is very simple, and that's that's part that's really the main part of the gameplay. And uh, other than that, it's all the, just the strategic choices that you're making by using those cards. So the gameplay was also uh, one of the pros as well. Now, as far as the cons of the game are concerned, the first one is really glaring, and that is one for me, and that is uh, the artistic or the graphic design of the game. Uh, while I was drawn to the abstract nature of the board, um, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way during the, the during the plays of the games. I wanted to have something more than just geometric shapes or uh, geometric shapes to look at. Um, I wanted. I wanted the countries, you know, the shapes of the countries. I wanted a little bit of a bigger board. I wanted more troops, but I, I get what they were doing with this. So this isn't a huge con for me, but it was a little bit sizable because um, I, I think that the the, the the wooden pieces are a, are, are a stark contrast to the graphic design of the game. And that's unfortunate because the pieces are really nice. The geometric shapes for the area control areas was kind of, um, it just missed the mark for me. So it was a con. Another con for me was the rule book. Um, it was short and it was concise, but I felt like it was, it left a little bit out. And I know that possibly might have something to do with translation. I don't know. Uh, but uh, the rule book was a little bit of a difficult thing to get through. Uh, during all of the plays that I had for this, we had to consult this multiple times. And that might just be my brain and the lack of memory power that it has left in it. But um, uh, this could have been worded better. Uh, in a lot of places and the iconography it's all back here on the back but again I think they used a lot of iconography on the cards which I understand they didn't want to use too much text but at the same time it did make it a little bit more difficult to um, remember what all of that stuff does because the iconography wasn't intuitive iconography is good if it's also intuitive but in this case it just wasn't so that was a that was a, a con for me as well so that's about that for my thoughts on Mini World War II. I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10 because I did enjoy it. I was probably a little bit too hyped up for it than I should have been. Um, but after a few plays, it's going to settle in at a 6 for me because I, I, while I enjoyed the gameplay, I enjoyed the card play and using the different uh, areas of the card to determine what I wanted to do, I enjoy that mechanic a lot and I enjoy area control games. It just didn't have the table presence that I wanted. And it also uh, was a little bit too abstract for me uh, in, in this particular case. I wanted there to be a little bit more something. And I don't know exactly what that something is, but it was missing. And I felt it missing, even though I couldn't put my finger on what exactly it was. So uh, I enjoy it. Six out of ten. I, I think that it's definitely one of those ones that you need to try before you buy, if at all possible, uh, so that uh, you can make the final determination on whether or not you're going to like it. Um, so that's it. Six out of ten for Mini World War II from Formosa Force Games. Thank you, guys and gals, for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We're going to get on out of here now. See you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.